Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Sauce Buns and Sidesteps. Joining me, Big M, as always, is the one and only cat boy, Mr. Hugh Griffin. How are we, my friend? Good evening. Good evening, Mark. I'm not cat boy this season. Cat boy was last season's nickname, but I haven't found a new nickname yet. So I don't blame people for still calling me cat boy until I find a new one. What? Come on, but your Twitter name is still cat. You know, it's there is a, yeah, but cat, uh, without letting. <laughs> I was about to say without letting the cat out of the bag. Um, <laughs> that might not be a long-term arrangement <gasps> moving into the next season, but all should be revealed. For, I should for say... all your listeners, my face is shocked. <laughs> so, well, for for every listeners, I need to reintroduce you, the, the host of the stunningly successful Taking the Internet by Storm Super Rugby Company podcast, absolutely drowning in views on YouTube, sensational sensational mate well i've always said it i've said it every single week on this pod since it started the community is what the people want and we finally got away to giving them a little bit of a in a full podcast so yeah if anyone is interested in your src clubs you know your slant every quins and obviously all the other ones from the other parts of wales we don't really care about then you know Give us a listen. Do we count RGC as again. one of ours? We haven't traditionally. Do we need to change that? Well, they're, they're on their own. Like, we've got one academy boy with them, and he's a Bethesda boy, so he's not a West Whaley, and he, he's, he's a little bit like George North was. He, he is a proper gog. So, I mean, I, I think RGC is, it is his own region without having a professional entity. Right, okay. Maybe we'll do we'll 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 vary that depending on uh, whether they win or not. <laughs> well, it depends who they win against because I'm 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 not happy with them this week. And we'll well, exactly. And anyway, let, 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 less of the promoting all that. Then we'll talk about the community towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first up, we had a, a little game out in Italy. I mean, I, I if, much better than last. He's not the first thing I'm going to say. Much much better, but. It hurts as much as a loss, if I'm honest with you. I'm I I, I couldn't speak for a good 30, 40 minutes <laughs> after that game. I was like, well, we we done so well. We deserve to win that game. Why? Oh Chris. Um Yeah, I mean I, I I'm happy overall, you know, defense was much improved. I mean, especially on our own line. Yeah. You know, few things to work on that will come in. But yeah, was, overall I'm just really good game you know too many tries chopped off for silly reasons like being in touch i mean who does that so uh what, what, what would you do make of it but yeah well like you said i mean that that there was a i think a lot of scarlet's fans were feeling very conflicted after the game because normally we'd be saying leading with two three minutes to go whatever it was need to be seeing the game out but on the other hand the performance was so much better than last any any performance last season, including the wins, the wins over Cardiff, the wins over Dragons, who, who what, what have you. Any that 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 performance that we saw against Benetton was better than anything we saw last season. So, you kind of take it. We'd all have taken it. We'd have all have taken a twenty or draw towards the end. Oh, Mark's shaking his head. Mark's like, win or die. <laughs> win or die. But. It was that what shocked me was Benetton kicking the ball out at the end. Them saying, No, we've had enough. We, we oh. could basically concede. I know, massive, massive cop out. You know, and come on, you've just scored to level the game. Surely you've got a bit of confidence in your veins at that point. Let's bloody go for it. No, I mean, you'd have thought they'd at least given it one try. Mm. Just, you know. Let's give it a give it a boot and see what happens. You know, because obviously, did we kick short for the last one? Yeah, we think we kicked short, and they just got rid of it as fast as they could. Um, it, it was disappointing. I'm not gonna lie. You you like that grandstand finish, and they really didn't give it to us. Yeah, well, we I think we broke them because in the first half they were turning down the three and going for the corner every time, and they got no joy out of that at all. So in the second half they started kicking for the three. I was like, cowards, pathetic. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it, it's what good teams do. They make you rethink your game plan, and it's like exactly. said, that's exactly what we did. Exactly. So, so th let's just talk about the team that was put out to face Benetton. Yeah. So, what was it? It was Kelmsley, 
uh, Van der Merwe, yeah, and See Sam what? Wainwright. So Sam Wainwright is what? Are all things being equal this season? Sam Wainwright, fourth he... choice tight head. Um, until we physically see Holtz, I'll put him as tied third. Uh, you know, Holtz could come in and, and be absolutely amazing and, and smash him out of the water. But until I physically see that myself, I, I'm not going to judge someone on the highlights reel. Yeah, it should be said that Sam Wainwright went off injured himself against Leicester. So we were like praying. It would have been Gabe Hawley playing a full 80 with no one on the bench if <laughs> Sam Wainwright wasn't fit. No, it, don't get me wrong. We we do have plenty of stock in the academy, but that's exactly what they are. They're academy and prop, especially tight dead. That's not somewhere you want, you know, a, probably even a young twenty, maybe even twenty one year old, getting some of his first minutes against an actual internet, well, almost international class team because that that is what Bennett and are. They've got more internationals than you know quite a lot of teams. So you've got to add in the fact that Gabe Hawley, he has spent the last either three or four years playing university, playing Bucks rugby. You know, his first actual senior men's game, supposedly, I have to say that because they've got no evidence otherwise, was against Carmarthen Quinns. So, you know, he's only played in two senior men's games and he was expected to come off the bench if needs be. You know, that is a massive, massive ask. Yeah. We'll skip for talking about the rest of the pack because we're going to talk about the pack loads in this game. So the big news when the team was originally announced was Johan Lloyd playing 12. Kind of, it ended up not happening because Sam Costello pulled out poorly before the game. But what was your initial reaction when you saw that Johan Lloyd was going to play 12? That Was that, because Johnny Williams was on the bench, remember? Yeah, I mean... My first reaction wasn't Johan related. It was more Max related. Um, I know we're going to talk about it more, but uh, Max is still very young and obviously his defence hasn't been properly tested at 13. So I was thinking, well, Johan's not exactly known for his defensive abilities. You know, okay, Costi is. So we've got a 10 that can defend and then both our centres. You know, in, in in professional terms, you might call him a bit flaky. I did think that we could, if he'd have been fit, I think we could have seen Sam defending at 12 a couple of times. I'll, I'll be honest, I thought we were going to see uh, one of our back rowers drop out to the line and come in to the centre channel for the, for well, obviously not the same one in the entire game. That might have been too much, but they would rotate around. Mm. I, d- I didn't think they were going to let your one and, you know, Paige defend that centre channel together on their own. Yeah, and then in the back three, we were going to talk about this a, a lot more in detail, but we saw the back three that we saw against Leicester, which was Rogers, me, and Blair Murray. And then on the bench, with Sammy dropping out, we saw, we saw T- Charlie Titcomb come in. And Charlie. like I said, Gabe Hawley, Sam O'Connor, who you're a big fan of, we'll talk about him in a bit. Ryan Elias was on the bench as well. He's coming back from illness. So it was... You know, we've talked about how we think our squad is in a pretty good place, but it was pretty close to a bit of a skeleton crew that we put out, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't I mean, near full strength. No, no, we're not near full strength. Like that 15, uh, you know, there's at least, well, one, two, three, four. I mean, five, maybe five players that we would swap into that 12 start in 15 if we had them all available. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, the injuries we've had at centre really haven't helped, which has, you know, allowed for, you know, the Max and Lloyd pairing to even be thought of, you know. So what I class as four frontline centres. So we've got Eddie James, Johnny Williams, Joe Roberts and Johan Nicholas. They're the ones I class as our four frontline centres. And for the fact that Johnny Williams was still, you know, a, a semi-doubt going into the captain's run... <laughs> It, it, it is a little bit worrying. Like, obviously, he's played a full 80, so, you know, well happy with that. But, yeah, it's uh, it's not a great start in the season when you've got, you know, key injury, San Castell or Archie Hughes. Like, we still don't know where Lousy is. Um, Harry O'Connor now done, essentially, for the season. I mean, I would be surprised if he gets yeah. back. And, you know, Henry Thomas, you know, our star tight dead that we brought in to show up the, the scrum. 
probably not needed anymore. <laughs> I'm only joking. But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of boys that can still come into this 15 and, and do damage. And hopefully we'll see at least two of them come in next week. Yeah, fingers crossed. So let's talk about the actual game itself then. Talk to me about the pack performance in this game. There's so much to talk about in this game. And like I said, completely different beast to this, what we were last year, even with Costello missing. Talk yeah. to me about oh. what we saw from that Scarlet's pack against Benetton. We saw everything. And I mean, absolutely everything. Everyone chipping in with tacks. I mean, it, the amount of tackles these boys put in is is no one's business. I know that's down to possession we had, etc. But, you know, what, what was it? Douglas came up with almost 30 tackles. Yeah. You know, Sam Wainwright put in 18. <laughs> you know, he's, he, he's never been known... For you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just tackle, I'll just tackle. But that that's literally what he did all game, which was outstanding. And then when we come to the set piece, I mean, oh, so beautiful, so so beautiful compared to last season. I mean, a hundred percent scrum, a hundred percent line out, and you know, winning one against the head and stealing a line out. I, I don't think we could have asked any more of anyone. Hmm. I mean, I can break it down to individual players and go, well, I want I want to see the likes of Matthias and Sam O'Connor carrying more, but that's a personal preference. In that game, they did everything they were asked to. They did everything they needed to. I mean, I, I can't really... I can nitpick if I'm, if I'm going to be critical, like with critiquing, you know, like I don't think we saw the best of Plumtree or Fafita in attack. I know Fafita, you know, made that nice little break which got choked off. But I I don't think we saw either of them, their normal illustrious selves, you know, making those half breaks, getting their hands in behind, looking for the offload. You know, that game was, you know, 90% a defensive effort from that pack mm. and they smashed it out to the park. No, no pun intended. They were industrious, I'm in awe a little bit, you know, looking at because who who's new? You know, um, da, 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 Douglas and Barnas. Two players don't make a pack. You know, that is that's seventy five percent. Jared the same Taylor as well. It's the first time we've properly seen Jared Taylor. I mean, he, he did have a couple of games last year. He season. had I, one I, half against Munster, I think. I can act if I'm if I'm quick. But I'm never quick. I always take my time with things. I'm lazy like that. So yeah, Jared Taylor. Da, 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 da. Let's find out where he was. Let's find out where he was. I'm singing along now because I'm trying to kill time. So yeah, he made one start and three appearances off the bench. So he did come into the squad late. I think it was February, was it? He did, so, yeah. He joined mid-season. You know, he is kind of like a new sign-in, really, because we didn't get enough of him last season when... We really we we pulled him in for the run in. We pulled him in to try and give us a little bit more, you know, in those last few games. Not convinced the seven is his best position. Um, I always thought when he not came a traditional in, open side. I don't think so. His stats were eighty minutes, twenty three meters, twenty one out of twenty two tackles. We made a, a load of tackles. I think we made like two hundred tackles in this game. In fact, let's oh, ten, see I if I can find it. Oh, pictures. Yeah, you're in the way. I'm showing people top 14 now, which I don't want to do. Damien Penno, what's going on? We're Is signing him next tackled? season. Yeah, no, we're signing him next season. Um, I'm going to get a bit darker now because I've had to unplug the lights and put my laptop back in. Right, so here we are then. So these are the stats from the game. So in terms Audio of... Audio listeners, it's up on the screen. Yeah, so people... So this is more of a YouTube thing. So... Set plays, as you said, 100% scrum win, 100% line-out win. 10 line-outs. We stole the line-out as well, stole one of their line-outs. Like you said, Mark, can't go much better. If I go now down to defence, and we talk about the intensity in the defence, 210 tackles at URC level. That's mad. That's an incredible number of tackles. That's, that's got to be up there. In, at least, i got to say easy top 10 most tackles ever made because you know i we see high numbers you know 150 160 you know fairly regularly when there's you know a, a bit of discrepancy but yeah that is that's insane and a 90 percent success rate as well and that's those yeah. are good numbers and it was it was there was a hunger and desire about the defense that we didn't see last season i think do we have to give it up to to jared payne who's now yeah to the defense 
Well, we we said back uh, what was it Christmas after Christmas we we saw a bit of change, and he he's had a good off season with them now. You know, I I think what he is doing is is actually bearing fruit, mm. and what what a surprise he is an actual defense coach. But yeah, you know, we brought him in as an attack coach for his defensive work is is unreal. Yeah, and then kicks, a lot of kicks in this game. So Benetton are a kick-high team. They kick one of the most out of any of URC team last season. So kick is one of their core strategies. Look at us, 36 kicks. That's a lot of kicks, especially at club level. So kick-to-pass ratio was 1 to 2.9, which yeah, so... is a bit of a it's a number that is like contextless, but take my word for it. For the Scarlets, this is one of the most kick-heavy games that we've had probably more than any game last year. Okay, I wanna I wanna make this a little bit more clear. We had I think thirty nine percent possession. Benton had sixty one, so they only had thirty nine kicks. Yeah, thirty nine percent possession. So, That's crazy low. Most games are forty five fifty five. Yeah, so for a kick heavy team with sixty one percent possession, kick thirty nine times with less than forty, we kick thirty six. That's a hell of a lot of possession when we didn't have much. Yeah, absolutely. Done set plays, attack, only 79 carries, but 224 metres from 79 carries is not to be sniffed at. That's close to three metres, post-contact metres per carry, which is pretty good. If you look at Benetton, on, on the other hand, now it's distorted a bit because Benetton were attacking on our line a lot, which and you don't get many carries off like goal line defence. So that kind of skews it away from Benetton, but... 163 ball carries, 221 metres. We're not limiting a team like anything close to that last season. No. I mean, if they got less than probably 2.5 metres, I think we would have been having a decent game. Yeah. So Single figure penalties as well. Nine penalties. Yeah. We, uh, that's not much to write home about from other teams, but for us, <laughs> that's really good. I mean... 10, 10 is always the target. I mean, I think they say it in any professional game. If you get your penalties in single figures, you're doing something right. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually accurate, uh, just because I thought Alex Craig gave away about half a dozen himself. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe. In fact, I can tell you that now. I know he gave away at least three because they were all on our own line. I'm pretty sure they've only got him down for one by a... They might do. I'm using Robbie Pass, and they're not the most reliable, I'll be honest. Discipline, penalties conceded. Max Douglas, two. And then that's no one else more one. than one. So yeah, there you go. That's... So, you know, there's the stats. I don't want to linger on this too much. Two, no. tr Three tries to two, but... Not really. We, I mean, we technically we scored four. Well, we did score four. Yeah, that's right. We need to... Carwin is already, you know, right, you know... Uh, Blair Murray has scored two tries in this game. It's just they happen to be disallowed, but he did score two. So that's two out of 15 so far. Right, let's talk about some individuals then. So Jared Taylor, we talked about his stats. Obviously, he scored the try as well. I can't believe that ref didn't do that. Like the TMO like had to call him in. This was such a typical case of the Scarlets have scored, better call the TMO, you know, so many times in this game. And... Like you saw the replay, and the team I was like, "Mate, you just got to try that. You, you want to reward this, but yeah, pretty simple stuff. I mean, I can you can, can kind of get it from the ref's angle. He can't see the ground in, but I'm pretty sure you know your touch judges are there. You know, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a massive thumbs up to him, and he was like, "No, I want to check it." Yeah, Matthias, we've talk, spoken about 100% scrum success. You know, most of the time when it comes to this discourse about Camsey Matthias on Twitter, it's coming from a, a certain other group of fans. But for the life of me, I can't find any of them online this week. No, I mean, Matthias is an absolute animal. He is still a baby in prop terms. He literally turned 25 two months ago. You know, he played a good chunk of last season in Judd. And then obviously the time recovering because your props, if you if you got a niggle or you're coming back, it can take a good couple of games to get your rhythm going. So having him fully fit as it's it's gonna I think it's gonna blow people's minds. I mean what what he did towards the end of the twenty two, twenty three season when he, you know, got his name into that Wales squad when he showed how good he could be, 
you know, yeah. that's what we're going to see and even better than. Mm. Max Douglas as well. We need to talk about him a little bit because all the all the people giving it that before this season, I was Scarlet have signed another show pony uh, second row who's all flair and no grunts. How's this for grunts? Twenty eight tackles, six line out takes, two dominant hits, half a hundred percent line out, hundred percent scrum. Where, where's your, where's your grunt? So, Mark, you're a you're a prop, right? Tell me about the difference a good second row makes to a scrum. Okay. It will depend, obviously, what whether you're loose or you're tight and who you've got behind you because it's, it's little things can tweak in a scrum and you can just make turn it from the best into the worst and from the worst into one of the best. So you look at Douglas's physique. He's very similar in stature to Craig. So he's got nice, really wide shoulders and the bulk to go behind it. Mm. So when 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 you are crouching down and you've got that support behind you and you can feel it and then that will come through it it it, it can't be overlooked how how more comfortable that can make you how much more at ease you are knowing where you're going and I'm assuming they've worked a lot on the scrum because of some of the issues that we have had you no know, once you get in in time you know with your locks once you get you know you, 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 you're actually pushing you if you can push together because you know you, you, when you look at a community level you see it all the time even when you look at a pro level you see it quite often that not everyone pushes together they're all slightly staggered and it seems as though they've got the unit in working together in unison when they're making that hit when they're holding that shove so having someone like you know Max Douglas up your behind is when you've got Craig the other side of him, I mean, that's outstanding. much, much different from having the likes of Sam Lousy and Fafita together. I mean, mm. you'd, you'd feel a lot less comfortable having those boys. Yeah. So it's early days, it's early days, but a little bit more relaxed about Alex Craig potentially leaving if Alex Craig, if, sorry, Max Douglas continues in that vein. But now we've got to talk about him, Mark. The, the player that everyone is talking about after this game is a oh, certain Max Page. So the Welsh under-20, we talked about him loads in the build-up. And he got his opportunity at 13, which, you know, we debated whether that, that's his best position. But if I just tell you his stats, 80 minutes, 74 metres, 12 out of 14 tackles, which is fucking impressive. All right. Oops, sorry. Apologies for swearing. Flipping no, impressive. 12 out of 14 tackles. Five defenders beaten more than anybody. Only three carries, which is not as many as you might think. Although, to be fair, outside centres don't touch the ball very much. So it's unusual for outside centres to get high number of carries. Two line breaks from his three carries. One pass, one try. Zero turnovers lost, zero penalties conceded. And they've got his try here. It, it, objectively, a good game. We have to We have to praise him, don't we? Yeah, uh, he did have a good game. Like I said, that was his was that, that was his first competitive start. First start at thirteen, yeah. you know, our oh, first start as well. That's what that mm. makes it even more. Like, and he'd been playing wing for Flandovery last year. He didn't play in the centre for Flandovery. Yeah, he, he played an odd game. I think he he played twelve as well at some point. He, he he has been moved around, but I think that was all part of his development. They want you know when you play in the back. Well, when you play anywhere, so. If, if you're a 13 and, okay, you go play 12 now, you know where you want your 12 to be, you know the things. That, so you can kind of adapt yourself around that, same as if you're, a, when you play wing, you know, that 13's telling you, it's, it's learning those little things, which I think is what they did at Landovery with him last season and what I'll expect them to keep doing. Um, as he, he did play really well. Um, I, I can't knock him for his effort. He, he really wants it. And, you know, even if we go back to the end of last season, you know, he's got all the raw materials, you know, to make it. You no, know, and I wouldn't have been surprised to see, you know, Gatland call him up in the summer because he is very well, fast. Well, Scrum Fires already well, picked him for a call-off in the autumn. Have they really? Mm, apparently, I, I'm told. I did it I did it first. I don't think he's ready. <laughs> I'll, I'll openly admit that. And but I, we I said in the summer, didn't we, that Gatland's got a history of calling up guys early. Look... 
He's got pace. He's got footwork. I mean, look at the footwork for 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 this. Steps a man. He, it's got. It's like it's like a perfect solo effort, isn't he? he? Steps someone. He burns someone from pace, and he hands off someone. So he he does it all. Yeah, I'm not going to call that a solo effort. There's no way you're ever going to get me call out solo effort. <laughs> all right, well, we'll discuss that. Beforehand. We'll discuss that more in a second, but. Where, yeah. When Joe Roberts and Eddie James are back available, where do you, where do we see him featuring this season, yeah. positional wise? Positionally, I think we're going to see him a lot more on the wing. Um, I, I don't think he can break into that centre partnership. You know, any of those three. I mean, he, he's got more X factor than you and Nicholas. There's no doubt about that. He doesn't have the same looks as him, but. He's 19. He's not going to. No, no one's no one's gonna have you know that sort of rugby intelligence compared to someone who's what seven, eight years older. Looking at his stats on their own, yeah, they're brilliant. You, you know, you couldn't have asked him much more. Um I, I've seen Max since he was playing rag 18s. I, I know we've got other boys involved who have seen him since he was even younger. And some of the issues where people, well, when you really pick at a play, I go, okay, what's where the faults here? I mean, he he still plays a lot more like an individual, like we saw that with him, you know, bolting out of the line for intercepts. Now he might have been given the freedom for that, but I, I don't see many thirteens being given, you know, the recourse to bolt out of a line, maybe take a step or two to see if it's on. But he just legged it, and there was, I think it was a point bet- before the, either the first or second try we conceded. He made the tackle over the line, and he was, he, he didn't even get back onto his feet before the ball had gone wide again. He was quite slow, so I think that intensity is going to give him, you know, he's going to have to get used to it. I think that's something he'll have to adapt to. Hmm. And yeah, I mean, if, if you look at his younger years, like there, there's, there's issues with his decision making, which uh, people have pulled up on before. So, you know, when to you know give the pass, go on your own, etc. So, I, I think we maybe saw a tiny bit of that with with the line break that didn't end in a try. You know, go tr- probably step in and going for the line himself rather than running towards where the support was. But this is a young kid. He's come on leaps and bounds in the last year. This was an incredible performance for your. URC start start in debut, so credit to him. I hope to see more. But the the issue we have now is Ellis Me has just pulled a banger out of his pocket. Yeah. And just before position... just before we talk about Ellis Me, so Ellis Me gets the try assist for the lovely soft hands, but that pass itself reminded me of something, and I realised what it was. So again, this is one more for the YouTube viewers. So I've got here queued up next to each other. It's a this split screen between. Max Page's try, which is at the bottom, and Joe Roberts' try against Munster. And it's one's off a line out, one's off a scrum, but they're the same move. If you watch it, with the pullback and then the flat pass, and then the 13 finishes it off. It's it's the same move. It's, yeah, a, it's it, a lovely it move. We need to come up with a name of it. The, is it the soft hands of death? Is that what we're calling it? Soft hands of death, yeah. Yeah, that works actually because you know Eddie James giving that pass you know to Joe Roberts in that in that Munster game we we raved mm-hmm. about that and now we've seen Ellis me you know another kid you know twenty years old himself he he might be a giant he might he might be a tree but you know he's still he's still a young kid and the, being the able more... to put someone into space that that's that's not passing anyone can pass anyone can do a little pop pass. Yeah. Getting that time in to put them into space, that, that takes time, that takes work. That, 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 that is an elite level skill that, you know, if you can execute it more than you don't, you know, you can go places. Yeah. Tell you what, mate, the more I watch this Joe Roberts try, the better it gets. It's a, it's a phenomenal try. Look, he gets, <laughs> if you watch it, the replay is going to start again in a second. He's got to score it again. Go on, Joe. Yes. Right. Watch. Um, he gets it on the 10 meter line. He gets the ball on the 10 meter line. He's got bloody miles to go. Is it playing on your end? Because I'm not seeing anything. Is it not playing for you? No, it's stuck on five seconds of his butt. I'm sorry. Oh, no. no. I, oh, I, I hope... think 
I hope it's been think, working. Yeah. I, I think what happens with, with the Joe Roberts... Oh, it's playing now. It's playing now, okay. There we go. So, yeah, you see him pick it up on the 10. He breaks through the first tackle, just glides past another. He time travels to, to the Paris Olympics, goes on the gymnastics floor, time travels back, and then he just dots it down, ball over the line. <laughs> you know what that is? So, so I love the... So the, what I love about my favourite kind of set play is a set play that leaves the last guy with still a heap of stuff to do. So like, so the, the plan is this, right? So Dwayne's, Dwayne's come up with a set play, right? And he's gone, right, here's what we do. Ball off the set piece, 9, 10, 10 pull, pulls it back. And then inside sensor, soft hands, puts the 13 into the gap, right? And then what, 13, all you've got to do, pin your ears back, run as fast as you can, do one man for pace, hand off another man, step another man, and then drag the ball over the line. It's simple. Right, go do it. Like I love that. I I I love like one of my favorite international tries is Andrew Stockdale's try against the All Blacks for Ireland, where they do the flashback to where the line out was, and then it's like all you have to do, Andrew, is uh, chip the ball over the entire All Blacks pack, run through them, pick up the ball, and then run thirty meters to the try line. That's all you have to do. Like I just, cool. it's proper box office, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if if we could see stuff like that every week, I I'd be happy. I mean, I'm I'm don't know if I'm too happy with you putting it on a public for on a public domain for everyone to come and see. Hang on, this is what the scouts do. We have to defend it now. <sighs> so t- talk no. talk about talk about Ellis me a bit more, um, because this is a player who I think we thought would be playing SRC rugby this season. But yeah. he caught my eye in the Leicester game. I don't know what it is. You know, like watching a player in person is different to watching him on TV. And the you, he can like not do anything, if you know what I mean in the game. But you still come away thinking, he looked decent. He, he, he just looked composed. And in this game as well, again, didn't do much, arguably. But he just looks right, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And, you know, to be fair, he I think he was subbed off on the 56th minute for Jack Davis, another another exciting prospect. You know, I think everything that the me did, he did well. And I think that's where we get that, you know, he, he's done, he, he contributed a fair bit. You know, the amount of high balls he took, great. I mean, st- when you're standing at six foot four, you know, <laughs> catching a high ball as a winger has got to be, you know, in your forte, that's got to be something you, you you pull out your back pocket every five seconds. And he did that and, you know, add into the fact that he can put players into space like he did for the max try. Mm. You know, there's, there's a good package. Um, not sure if wing is... is his preferred place. I think like... all three of the wingers, all three of the back three are full backs that we saw. I mean, is... Is Blair fullback? I mean, well, I, I they say know. that he can play fly half. He said in an interview that his favourite position is fullback. So he, oh, I, I'd yeah. say he's a, a fullback. But playing a back three f- of full fullbacks is not a not a bad strategy. I get it. So if I could ask Dwayne a question, I would probably ask him about that. Is we don't really have any out and out wingers in the squad. All of our wingers, I think, can play fullback. So I would be interested to hear Dwayne's like view on that. Of, yeah. Does he does he I, want all fullbacks in his back three? Like I'm I'm looking through it now and I think and it's only because I don't know a massive amount on him. I think he and Abraham might be the only person that's a winger. Mm. I mean, I I, I could probably go through a full plant every team sheets now and find him at fifteen. No in my luck, but yeah, every single one of them, Tommy Lewis, you know, he's he's a fullback. Blair Murray, like you said, Steph Evans started his career there. That's that's where I liked seeing him a lot in the in the early days. So yeah, everyone is a fullback. That's we we'll call them back three players. Just, yeah, exactly. It it's a yeah. back three. It's a revolving back three. Yeah. Anybody else that we need to talk about then? Any other players that we need to to call out before we talk about some some things that you know it it was a like a much improved performance, but there still work ons. I think. Yeah, um, Sam O'Connor coming off the bench. You know. He, what what he did, you know, this boy is 22. So, like I said earlier, young prop. You're, you're not going to get many opportunities at that age unless you are, you know, top draw, unless you do have something about you. Like, same with his brother, Harry. You know, he, mm. he was 
you know, getting appearances two years ago when he was a similar age. So something we saw, I believe, was against either Leicester or against Sarah Sons, where he literally, his carry in, you know, he broke the line. He made a massive carry and he offloaded for tries. So he's got that side of him and he's he's this new modern age prop, very much like Kemsley Matthias. You see they're built big, you know, they've got that sort of bodybuilder physique. There's not it's not all weight. You know, there's there's a proper physique to him. Like if you compared him to like, you know, your traditional tight dead, you know, Harry O'Connor, Henry Thomas, the, mm. the the day and night in their body shapes. And, you know, that's something we do have in Sam O'Connor. He is very top heavy and he'll be very powerful. So yeah, I was very happy, you know, with his performance. Uh current two plot to again. Well I, I we said last season I I would rather him in that back row. I think he gives us a lot more balance. But uh, you know, it is what it is. When you've got someone that likes to buy him for feet there, you're not gonna keep him on the bench every single game. You know, you just no, I'm going to do that. And I think that rounds it up for me. I, I touched on Jack Davis earlier. Great prospect. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see him being... That was interesting, back. wasn't it? He didn't didn't get to touch the ball very much, I don't think. But very interesting that Dwayne felt comfortable to bring him on early. I think we agree that we would have seen him. If he hadn't had that injury last season, we would have seen him in the URC last season. So, yeah. Um, things for me that I think we need to improve. Again, something, again, that we struggled with last season, giving away penalties in our own half. So we're pinning ourselves in our own half a lot. That still is something that needs to fix. And, you know, I've spoken to coaches elsewhere and, you know, they said that that is something that you, you do at home. So whether we need to bring in a coach into the training session and the coach needs to be like hyper sensitive and just pinging us off the park in training until we learn that discipline. I think that's something that the coaches can fix. Yeah, I I think in regards to this, this is your defence coach. So this is, okay, We technically we do have a part-time defence coach. The other part of the time, he's an attack coach. But <laughs> just, just basing off last season, you know, the amount of penalties we would concede and the actual effort, all around it is improved. And I, I, I think, well, let's give it this block to see how that goes and what, you know, in, in terms of, do we need to get someone on it full time? Mm. You know, but that, that, that's just my take on that. Mm. Uh, next, so exits. So both of both of Benetton's tries in the first half came from poor exits. One straight up, Cowdor should have got more length on his kick. He, he, we turned the ball over in defence. Great, Cowdor kicks it. It barely reaches the twenty-two. He need, needs to go further. So whether he needs someone to crash it up, make more meters, so he's got a better angle, less distance to cover, but your international scrum half needs to be getting, you know, closer to the 10 meter line for me. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I was watching it all game and I was thinking these are 20, maybe 25 meters at a push, sometimes even shorter, which I think was for one of the tries. And you're thinking, you know, 30 is your target player. 30 is your minimum target. You know, you, you're a professional player. Like, And if you're in that situation where your box, your exits aren't going to plan, your box kicks are going, you know, they are coming in shorter. Like, if there's windows and then two attributes, where, yeah, fair enough, obviously. But we we had Joe and Lloyd in there. We, we still got a 10 that can boot the ball, and he can boot the ball. His distance you know, on kicks is very good. Yeah, just... Just play it to the 10. Let him clear it. You know, if, if it's a case of we don't know 22, we're going to touch. Chuck it in field. Let him do it. I mean, you're always, you know, when you're stuck in the tram lines, you know, when when you're inside of that 15, you know, that, that angle, is, it's never the best. So you know, another five meters in, much better angle. And you've got someone with the power of boot that like your one like does. I, that that just seems to be a much easier option. Yeah. It's not something we see a lot of anymore, which you know, I get from the point of oh, if you kick starts five meters further forward, it doesn't have to go. Yeah, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. I will say that um some of it in the second half after we took the lead, Caldos did put in a few box kicks and they were very good. He did have a, a string of two or three very, very good box kicks where the distance and hang time was perfect and we were able to contest. Again, something that we didn't see at all last season. Yeah, well, there's a massive difference between, you know, kicking the touch and 
kicking to compete and kicking to compete he was really good I, I, I will openly admit to that there seemed to be two sides of that game he, he, he was putting his competing length on his exited length so yeah. you know you just as well as I mean when, when we look at the scrum halves that we got like we, we're not 100% on you know where Archie Hughes is because we haven't seen enough of him come mm. on Dwayne get him fit get him on the pitch uh, so yeah, losing someone like Kieran Hardy, who basically his forte was to kick and kick for fun, it it, it does have, have that sort of effect, you know. But Cowdo's class, you know, forms temporary, class permanent. He's he is where he is because of how good he has been and how many other nines yeah. he has beaten out over the years. Well, every other starting nine at a Welsh region currently was at some point second choice to Gareth Davis at the Scarlets, so. There you go. Um, I will say that the second try that Benison scored, we it was a scramble. We turned the ball over and we play, were playing behind our own goal line. Johan Lloyd did, put in a great effort to get out of trouble. I don't think it was the only who kicked it. I can't remember exactly, but the the distance was good, but it just goes infield. And so the I think it was Rhino Smith, whoever it was, has just got all the time and space to pick what he wants to do and just run it back. So that's a, that's one that should have gone to touch. So, yeah. I mean, and if we're talking about kicks, I mean, this some people may agree with me. Uh, people probably want our final penalty. I I've looked at the angle. I was thinking, let's go to the corner. Let's go to the corner. Yeah. I know we made the I know we made the kick and we got to twenty, you no know, decent lead and all that. But at that point in time, our set piece was functioning. We've already been over once with them for a mole try. I I thought we should be going for the corner over there to get to get a two score gap. That's probably my only niggle then going in for the attack inside of the game. But Yoan did nail it though. He did, and he did nail it. This is the thing about Yoan is two 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 of his most underrated skills are under the high ball and place kicking. His place kicking is excellent. Very, very, very good. Okay, I, I need to confirm. Are we calling him place kicking or goal kicking? Kicking from the tee. Goal kicking. Shots yeah, at like both. Place kicking, yeah. like, place kicking is a kick to touch in my eyes, but that's that's me. But yeah, no, um, I I would always consider your one's goal kicking to be average, maybe a bit better. So yeah, he nailed a booty fair play. What, what was it? Just in from the five. And he got those two conversions as well that were in the corner. They were, they were fair play to the boy. I mean, let's be honest. If we look at, uh, you know, what, what was that a star kicker we had, you know, a couple of years ago? You know, um, half penny. He, you know, he didn't even get within thirty meters of the post with one of his kicks this weekend. That was the commentator's fault, though. Uh, <laughs> so, and so that, but that Johan brings me on to my final point: is that what does it take for Charlie Tickham to get on the pitch? Because. Yoan played the full 80, Cowdell played the full 80, Sam Wainwright played the full 80, and Jack Price only came on on the 79. So this is something that we riled against last season as well. He used the bench. Now, we were talking in the group chat that we felt like bringing Charlie on and maybe shifting Yoan to 12 and bumping the back line out all one might have helped a bit. It was an option that was there, but for whatever reason, Dwayne didn't want to use the players that are on the bench. Now, we talked about it being a bit of a skeleton crew, but unusual for essentially four unused subs again. Yeah, I mean, it, it should have been five realistically because, you know, Fafita didn't go off till they scored their final try and it was literally the restart. They passed it back and kicked the touch because they massive cop outs. Mm -hmm. So, Titcom was made for that game. He is the 10 that was made for that game. He is a kicking 10. We had so much pace. And I mean, so much pace in our back line. And, well, height, if you add Ellis me in, that we should have been dropping bombs everywhere, chipping over the top, putting grubbers in. I mean, I, I expected that, considering the size of the back line we had, I thought we would see more of that game plan. We, we did see, you know, a few kicks to compete, but nowhere near the amount I was anticipating. Mm. When you've got someone with, you know, you've got, you've got me, who's six foot four, and he's clearly very comfortable under the high ball. Then you've got people like Max Page and Blair Murray with lightning pace, and, and it is lightning, because you can't describe it any other way. 
put that ball behind. See what they can do. See if they can get on to it. Because you can always, you know, when you've got players with that bit of extra pace, you don't need to be as accurate. You've got, you've got that extra two, three metres, maybe even five if you're lucky, you know, leeway to get that kick in the right place. Yeah. Okay. So finally then, just to wrap up on the Benison chat, uh, a bit of sharing the good vibes that came out of Italy. So as we know, uh, the Scarlet's annual trip to Treviso or Armour is one of the uh, standout parts of the rugby season. So we had a, a good few fans sharing their experience. So here's one here. I don't need to zoom out a bit. Oh, look at that kit. Is that, is that an 0304 kit? Which one? On the... Oh, the uh, the young lady over there, yeah. Yeah, oh. her, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I th it's a good one, isn't it? It's a good one. And I think please, I love it. In the foregrounds here, we've got Will and his now fiance, I believe. So shout out to them. I believe that they uh, became engaged whilst on the trip to Treviso. So congratulations. Shout out to them. Happy days. Look at that big yeah, banner. We could hear them all singing on the telly, couldn't we? Oh yes, that's that's one thing you always find. It doesn't matter if it's fight with them. The police. It doesn't matter if it was five of them like it was in Saracens or there's 500. They will. Oh, no, right. Sorry, that has reminded me. I do need to make a public apology. <laughs> Last week, I said that we didn't have any fans at Saracens. That's incorrect. I have been written to by two separate people to tell me that there are two. about, oh, about no. 20 Scarlet's fans there for Saracens, <laughs> which was, a, I believe, a record gate for Saracens. So congratulations to them. Right, and then finally, <laughs> finally, there's been a bit of drama, Mark. Oh, no, no drama. Tame Plumtree has been kicked off the cool kids' table. Has he? Has he really, yeah. or is he there developing he, the next generation? He sat next to Sam O'Connor and Jack Price. It's not going well, Tame. Yeah. That's, They've that's all asked easy. to have a selfie with him, look. Maybe that's why he's there. Maybe he's just going over for a selfie. Oh, he's signing autographs. Yes, yes, that's it. Okay. Yeah, cool. they, I mean, they, oh, I, I don't know. I think Jack Price may have just edged out of Academy contract, but, you know, Sam O'Connor still is. <laughs> yeah. The boys are playing cards. What game do you think they're playing? Um, it looks like, I, I think I saw five cards in, so it's got to be it's got to be poker, haven't it? Well, we've got Vea talking to, to Carwin here, and I think they're playing 21. Blackjack, yeah, yeah, blackjack or pontoon because he's got he's got a queen, but I think he's got a two as well. So I would. How I can would you see? Oh, I see it now. I would definitely twist, Carwin. Oh yeah, you got to. Yeah, you, yeah, come on. It's only four cards that'll kill you. Yeah, exactly. They're having a chat. I don't know what about something Tongan on his team. There's Johnny Williams. He looks bit. He's what? I don't know who he sat next to here, but he's definitely saying, "Do you see what Tane did earlier?" And I'm not at this table. That's what he's saying. Johnny Williams definitely runs the cool kids table, doesn't he? Yeah, he's he's not that old man, but he's he's you know he's, he's that form sixer when you're year seven, you're like you know yeah, can I be your friend. Exactly. Jack sure Price learned to shuffle, and that is is Sammy right? He looks poorly, doesn't he? There, he's the only he one wearing a hoodie. Great. Like you know, maybe he's feeling a bit cold. I, I think he's... Yeah, he... well, we know he's under the weather. Yeah. So... But obviously Ryan Elias was poorly last week as well, so... I, I think it's just teams going realizing... I think it's teams realising how good we are and they've just gone to, look, we've got to just try and poison them and get a few players out of the game. Uh, you know what? I think that's probably what is what is happening. Okay. Yes. Right. Before... Oh, no. I just remember something else that I want to show you. Oh... Oh, don't be like that. It's I am so no. It's, I'm so sorry for the audio listeners. We'll have to describe this for you. Right. Okay. So every year, well, all the time, I suppose, the URC do official photos for all the players. Well, I say all of them. You'll see in a moment that not all of them have a photo, but they are normally quite funny. So Max Douglas's one, for example, is him using the a rugby ball as a beer drink could so be, could be water come on king of beers is now max douglas's uh nickname and they've got yeah it's really good actually to be fair you can copy and paste these you can use them in whatever you want uh, it's got his season stats he's got his age his height 
six foot seven, you know, second row, obviously. But you've also got some of the boys do a bit of funny poses. So you obviously got Vea, knows he runs the place. Look at that. He's giving it the uh, the Usain the Usain Bolt Thunderbolt Lightning Bolt. Who else have we got? Shout if you can see any funny ones. Alec Hepburn, Hepburn. way too handsome to be a prop. What's going on there? What, what do you mean too handsome to be a prop? Where do you think the standard starts? <laughs> Morgan uh, Jones is there flexing his guns. Yeah, so is Tane, Harry O'Connor, and Matthias. Two props giving us a lift. Tane always has a wild man. Always a wild man pose. You can, if you look carefully, you can actually see his arms are slightly blurry. That's because he's just going absolutely ma- mental. In the yeah, photo. I mean, you just see you see these photos and you see them trying to be look intimidating and they're just trying to laugh at this, not to laugh at the same time. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Uh, what's Manus doing with this? He, he's well, he's pointing at you, team. mate. He's pointing at you. He's pointing at me. He's seen. He's throwing you. the ball to me. I got it. <laughs> Let's go on to the back. Okay, now. Yeah. Ben, Will- ben Williams rocking a goatee these days. Interesting. Trying nice. to shake off the baby face. Hey, he is still a little lad. There's Sammy. So, so Sammy, Sammy oh, did, oh, uh, Sammy did a, a, a bicep curl last season as well. It's obviously his sh- signature move. <laughs> it's part of his brand. <laughs> his cow this Steph Evans. Tommy Lewis, he's pointing in as well. Oh, we've got three in a row here, all pointing up. And do you know what that is? Do you know what I reckon that is? They know I'm going to I'm going to do a stats post about them at some point. So they're pointing upwards ah, towards yeah. my stats. That's what it is. It's a good thing the stats don't go below. That'd be dodgy. Exactly. Blair Murray, no photo. Oh. So sorry, Blair, you don't exist. Oh, neither does Max. What's Max going on here? Exist either. Proper main character energy from Joe Roberts, by the way. He's like, yeah, he's feel me. <laughs> we saw, by the way, footage of him doing a goose step. So his knee's uh, not injured. So, uh, come on, it, it, that weren't really a goose step, was it? I mean, it weren't the worst one in that video, but it weren't, it weren't a full one. Yeah. All right. I so mean, that's, that's the squad. Did, yeah. I mean, Joe Roberts, he didn't look uncomfortable. Look, he didn't look like he was in pain. He, no, it wasn't the most fluid of movement, but he, he didn't look in pain. So that was absolutely brilliant to see. Yeah, fantastic. Right before we. Enter the community game, Martin. I'm afraid we've had a letter. A letter. Okay. Let me. I, I'm. I'm. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. It's from Zoe in in Pentech. It's not. I'm afraid. It's. It's from Jack from Lucky. Ooh. It says, "Dear Suspens and Sidesteps." I was yet again disappointed to see the Scarlets fans talking with so much enthusiasm about their Tongan contingent, which is, of course, an absolute shambles. Why can't you give more opportunities to local talent, proper West Walians like Jack Walsh and Daniel Cassandi? Yours, Jack from Lucker. Well, what have you got to say to that, Mark? I, I, don't, I don't think the kids would listen. I don't think the kids should listen to what I want to say to Jack. Oh, just do one, but we don't care. You're you're the wrong side of the bridge. Unless your blood runs scarlet, just go away. You're not relevant. I definitely think that Jack's blood is black, without a doubt. Nice. Anyway, let's get on to the good bit of the show, mate. The good bit. The community game is here, and we can you share the find... can you share the, the the Excel? It's way more engaging when you share the Excel. Uh... I do not know. Um, let me see. This might take us a while now, so please feel free to blame Mr. Griffin for his... Go make a cup of tea. Everybody get comfortable. Maybe a biscuit. Not if you're driving, obviously. would we'll be unsafe. Okay, I'm going to try and share it. Oh. So, have I made it big enough? Yeah. Yay, Okay. So we'll start with the SRC. So Kamar and Quinn's going down 24-18 away to Aberavon. Academy boys in their lineup. We are Gabriel McDonald at 12 and Yori Badham at 11. The shock of the round, RGC 28, Clandavry 23. It was a shock. 
bitterly disappointed for us. It wasn't a shock for everyone on the SRC podcast. Uh, tune in if you want to know more about these games. Uh, Academy boys we had involved in the 15. We had Will Plessy playing seven. Will Evans playing four. Well, he's a lock. I'm not sure which one he was. And Harry Thomas, a tucker. And on the bench, there was Jack Jones, who is fly-off, full-back, however you want him to go. Uh, games this week now, Clandavry are travelling to Ebu Vale and Kamar and Quinns are travelling to Cardiff. This is the first week of a double header, so these fixtures will be reversed next week. So you, you get a bite back at that charity if something goes wrong in this game. Exciting. So down to the Premiership, at Narbath losing 19 0 away to Bargoyd. It's not a great start for Narbath. Clangenic losing 14 13 at home to Pontypridd. Again, Clangenic. Slangenic have lost both their opening games, but that's a one-point loss against what is one of the top favourites to this league. That is nothing to be ashamed about. That's something to shout about, to be honest. And then Newcastle Emlyn casually going down 71-0 at home to Merthyr. That's a Again, bad one. Yeah, what's, been, Mer- what's happened there, Mark? Uh, Merthyr and Pontypridd, they these are the two. Like, like I even say Neath is probably a level behind them. They are the two front runners to this league. And, you know, in all fairness, I love Newcastle Emlyn, but realistically, you know, the fight is not to finish bottom. So it's, it's not too, too out of place. Um, so fixtures to this week Newcastle Emlyn going to Breck, and that's going to be another tough one. And then we've got an all Scarlet Clash where Narbeth hosts Langenek when someone's always got to go. Um, into Championship West, Krimich going down 626 at home to Glenith, Clethy Wanderers picking right back up 31 19 win at home to Kenvik Hill, and then Ammonford, who were, were really in this game at half time. I think they may have been leading as well, going down 42 32 away to Tata Steel. Tata really come alive this season. You know, they've gone from I think losing almost every single game they've played for two years or maybe even longer to win a few. Uh, this week now, Armand Fudder at home to Krimich and Fleffy Wonders travel to go sign on. Division 1 West, Aberystwyth, Pippin, Kidwelly, 28-27. You know, Aberystwyth looking good this year, fair play to him. Uh, Barry Port winning 23-19 at home to Ponte de Lies. Hendy winning 38-19 at home to Pencloud. St. Clair's winning 12-11 away to one eyelid. And 10 BV Vellinvol was postponed because Vellinvol couldn't raise a side, which is quite concerning. But, you know, mm. early days, maybe people are still on holiday. Same with the referee issues the last couple of weeks. So, uh, fixtures this week. Barry Port travel to Aberystwyth. Well involved at home to Kidwelly at home to Tembe. And then I've got mistakes in there, so I'll come back to that later. I'm very sorry, people. Uh, down into 2 West Central, we got Bryn Amman lost 25-24 way to Penn Court. A lot of close so games close. going around these days. They are. They, the way they've redone the leagues and they've, they've shook them up, but there's been a few you know, teams moving around across, you know, between West Central, West, and I'm sure on the other side as well. The, the, the playing field is remarkably level nowadays, which is just great to see. So their game is a way to mumble one of those teams that has moved. So into two West, uh, Carmarthen Athletic win 36 26 at home to Betters, Fishguard 44 5 at home to Nankaredig. Wickland still can't win in two West. You know, 65 8 away to Lampeter. You know, Lampeter are a good team, but, you know, this Wickland used to be one of the best teams, you know, in the region. So, you know, something, something's gone wrong by there. Uh, Lacha v Milford was postponed. Milford couldn't raise a side. So, again, worrying times, but they have played this season. So, hopefully, it was just. Don't want to go to Lacha, which mm. you know who does. Uh, Lang got the bye. Fixtures this week: Fishguard at home to Carmarth Athletic. That'll be a good one. You know, two undefeated sides. Milford at home to Lang. Nankaredic hosting Lacha. Whitland hosting Betos and Lampard again. The bye into three West now. Cardigan against Ponteberem got abandoned because the referee got injured. Not a hundred percent what happened. Uh, you know, what's the point of having linos? Well, because. Uh, it's three west, you know. We're talking one, two, three, four, f- the f- the fifth tier, you know, of you know Welsh rugby below professionalism. You know, this is you know where you, you when your coach is is the touch judge. You know, so it'd be a bit unfair to do that. 
Uh, other results, we've got Clandilo winning 31-15 at home to Kevin. I think Halford West winning 22-27 away to Flangadog. The Croix winning 50-21 at home to Aberaeron. And Tumble coming out in a very close one, 26-24 at home to Armin United. Uh, fixtures of this week, Abra Run hosting Kevin Nathan, Cardinger can go into Army like Dead, Halford West hosting to Christ, Pontebarium hosting Flangadog and Flandilo traveling to Tumble. We now go down into 4 West A. Flanderbudder 24, Langham 20, gutted for Langham. We do all love Langham, but it is what it is. Now, this is a dodgy one because Narbeth Athletic against Pembroke Doc Harlequins was postponed, but Narbeth Athletic played a fixture, and I can't find any reason for why this game didn't go ahead, so... Uh, mm. Nayland then beat Krimich Tyru 42-16, and St. David's win in 2015, the way to Pembroke, massive win for St. David's, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't have expected stuff like that even two years ago, and Newcastle Emmet Dragia had the bye this week, fixtures now, Flangham host, Newcastle Emmet Dragia, Pembroke Dock Horse in Nayland, Narvath Athletic going to, tra- to St. David's, and Slanabada traveling to Krimich Tyru, and Pembroke get the bye. For West B, Trimsaran keeping the win in start going, 24 17 win away to Fall Bay. New Dock Stars with a massive 91 5 win at home to Pantavana. Get in, boys. After the shambles of last week's result, biased referees cost us a win by a point. Now, <laughs> now we see with a fair referee, all things being equal. This is the gap from us to the rest. Okay. Uh, Pennebank winning 26-24 at home to Flandibby. Furnace, another one of those teams who were undefeated so far this season. 28-27 away to Pontiac. And Tregaran winning 25-22 at home to Binia. Another, another three close games there. Yeah, no, they Well, four of them even, you know. Four Bay Trump's was a single score game. You know, these these are tight. You no, know, so fixtures in four West B for this week. We've got Binia at home to Pennebank. Pontiac's traveling to Fall Bay. New Dog traveling to Flandibi, Pantavanan at home to Furness, and Trimsaran hosting Tregaran. That is all the league fixtures we got for you. Now down into the Dewey Shield, they had a week off. So our fixtures come in, most likely on Friday, is Carmarthen Schools against Mandith Maur, Keradigion against Lenechli, and Pembrokeshire against RGC West. And that, for me, rounds up the community game. So I need to figure out how to stop sharing now. There you go. So, have I done it? Yeah. Right. Yes, you have done it, Mark. Yes. Okay. I've done it. So, look ahead to Cardiff then. I should say, if you're still with us here on Sauce Fans and Sidesteps, you clearly enjoy what we're doing. So, if you are listening on audio, whether that's Apple or Spotify, if you leave us a five star review and a comment there, it makes a world of difference to us and our ability to grow the show. Or if you subscribe on YouTube, if you're watching the YouTube version, like and leave a comment. If you leave a comment, we'll reply to absolutely everybody. So thanks very much in advance. Woo! So we're talking into the future now. We're going to Cardiff. Well, we're not going to Cardiff. We're going to the Cardiff game, let's say. Uh, Cardiff at the park. I mean, if we were talking SRC, this would be a six-pointer. Unfortunately, it's you know just the normal URC, so you know it's got to be a bonus point. When I I can't I can't see anything else. I don't want to see anything else. So if we lose this, we're not podcasting next week. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna have a week off. No, you can't lose the Cardiff at home. It it just doesn't work, does it? It does it doesn't fit in with the agenda, especially when you look at the performances of this week. Yeah, that I think. Are we favourites? We've got to be favourites at home. I don't think we. I don't think we will be favourites because I think people will big up Cardiff, even though I don't know what's there to big up. People in Wales but, bigging up Cardiff? I'd refuse to believe it. Well, when it's a derby, they tend to it's either Cardiff or you know the Budgies. Well, you know they're they're only playing us because Bath don't want to play them anyway. But exactly yeah, the. I've, I, I I feel like we we should win. I feel like it, I'll be very disappointed if we don't win. Yeah, I I will be as well. I mean, I'm I saw that Cardiff game against Zebra, and apart from a bit of pace, which you know we have also got, I I don't see anything that scares me. You know, our our performance against a playoff level team away from home. 
compared to playing the bottom side of the league at home, you know, they they barely got over the line. I mean, that game goes on a few minutes longer and Zebra picking up that win. You know, mm. I'm, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind about that. The ascendancy had changed massively. Where we've gone out to Italy, we've taken the lead in the second half. We've held it for a while. You know, okay, they, they had the opportunity to win, but they didn't. And it still felt like, it still feels a bit like a loss to me. You know, we, we, we deserved more. We played better than that. We played better than a draw. So, yeah, I'm I'm expecting a five pointer. This is something that we wanted to see, you know, Scarlet side, you know, being more industrious, being more attacking wise. And I think our last two games, so Saracens, three tries, four, probably a probably another dozen that they bloody tried to disallow. And again, we've had two disallowed tries this last week. You know, we are returning to that Scarlet flair. We have, we are attacking teams. We are getting over the game, and we're getting over the whitewash as well. We're just not getting given the bloody score. Mm. So yeah, I I'm, I I'm not. There's nothing in that Cardiff back line or even their pack that scares me. And yeah. I've talked to a couple of boys, Cardiff boys. I don't think there's anyone notable that will come into that 15 next week that will really change them. Like we can talk about Sam Costello and Eddie James both coming back, and we can talk how that will improve us. Mm. You no, know? and I don't. They uh, they're under the impression they've got no one coming back ready for next week. So that level team is what we're going to be facing. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity. Opportunity is the word I use. It's an opportunity for our pack to make a statement. So we've shown the improvement in Treviso. Now it's a case to to show where we can be in the pecking order in Wales in terms of where our pack is. Because, you know, obviously we have, people have the perception that the Scarlets have a weak pack. But if we can do a job on Cardiff up front, then that that's, that's definitely something that can fuel us for the rest of the season. So you touched on it there in terms of selections. Where would you like to see selections going for, for Saturday? Okay. Um, the only two force changes... Um, you know, Sam Costello's got to come back in a 10. Yes, Yoan Lloyd had a good game, but Sam runs the ship so much differently and he's a better game manager than, than Yoan is. There's no issue with that. Uh, I'd shift Johnny Williams to 13 to get Eddie James back in a 12. You know, that combination started working really well last season and I've no doubt it'll work again. I, I know that does mean that Max Page you know, misses out. But you know, I I would you know put Max on the bench if needs be if mm. it is a case of Eddie is Eddie is ready. Yeah, I've always wanted to say something like that. No other changes to the pack. Well, obviously, we don't know state um, the status of Fafita. We don't. There's no, I haven't heard any rumors on it either. No, I haven't heard nothing. If Fafita is out, then Carwin comes straight back in. I'll I'll touch on the bench in a minute because we don't know the status of a few players. But yeah, he is the only, that's the only position I, I would change and that's if it's needed. You know, if, if he does not not ready for this game, then Carwin comes straight in. And quite frankly, that I think that gives us a better look. I think that opens Team Plumtree up to do a lot more damage in attack than when mm. him and Fafita are there yeah. and they're both balancing defensive and attacking exactly. duties. Exactly. Together. You know, the, our whole thing, you know, for people who may, if anybody's new, our whole thing with Fafita and Plumtree is two phenomenally talented players are they are they in our top three most talented back row players uh, absolutely no no doubt the the thing is they're just like the same player twice which yeah. is not ten, tends to be how back back rows work so the if it was me if i was picking the team i'd start one have the other on the bench bring the other on on 50 minutes and literally week to week i just alternate who starts on the, on the bench that's that's what i would do it's it's the position that we found ourselves in where we have two players who are so similar and so close on talents. Yeah, I mean, they are unbelievably similar players, similar in stature, similar in almost anything. Uh, I do feel the Fafita is still better than Plumtree if you're looking at them one v one, but that gap is getting smaller by the day, and I, I don't think it'd be long before you know Tain eclipses Fafita as the better player, which. He's a young man. If he does not get any younger, I know he's going to be here for a few more years. But hmm. I would expect Tay now, as he starts coming into his prime over the next two or three years, he starts making those bigger leaps and bounds. So 
If, yeah, if I, Costello is free, what would you do with Johan Lloyd? I mean, I don't want to mess around with the back line, but just, just because I don't think anyone else covers much, like if we were to put him at 15 and then Rogers on the bench, he really only does cover fullback. I know he can play wing, but he's not a wing. And then the same with Ellis Me and Blay Murray. They, they don't cover enough positions where Johan does. He, it's that utility tag, which he has unfortunately got, which means I would have him on the bench given the option. Mm. I can see the argument for that. I think what Dwayne will do is I think he'll play Johan at 15 move yeah. Rogers out to the wing and I think he, Dwayne would drop Ellis Mee first Me. out of that back three. That's not necessarily yeah. what I would do, but that's what I think that Dwayne will do. And then yeah, up yeah. front, do we know if Henry Thomas is likely to be available? Okay, this is something I was talking about in regards to my bench. We've got a lot of players who we've basically been told they they're in full training, but they're just not back today. So... Uh, you know, Henry Thomas is on that list. Sam Lowe's he's on that list. Josh McLeod is on that list. You know, these players, you know, they, they might not be back till after November, but mm. the point is they could be back this week. So, you know, and, and until we get some clarity, hopefully, you know, the Scarlets will, you know, put their press conference, you know, news out, you know, pretty early on Wednesday or Thursday or whenever they do it. And, you know, we get to know which of these boys is fit because, I, if Henry Thomas is fit, he goes in on the bench. Um, same as you know, if Sam Lousy or when Josh McLeod comes back, they start on the bench. Mm. I'm I'm not a big believer of someone who having a, a tidy injury and then coming back. Like Sam Costello was was sick. You know he was ill. It's not a case of he hasn't played rugby in ages. You know he can come back in. Eddie James only missed last week because concussion. He played the two weeks before. He can come back in. You know. Henry Thomas, he literally has had two minutes, two minutes of rugby. That that's that's it. So he'd be coming back on the bench, and then the same with Lousy and McLeod. They haven't had any rugby. Mm. You see, we we just need to go six two split, don't we? That squad screams six two split. Oh, it but... does. Unbelievable. Uh, the the only problem going with a six two split is who do you sacrifice? I mean, at the minute, if we're not going to play a scrum half, I mean, I'm sure Hewan Lloyd or Sam Costello would willingly play a scrum half. Well, we have to have a scrum ball. half. So it means that one of Tom Rogers... Well, if I was picking the team, it would be one of Tom Rogers and Max Page not making it. And at the moment, that yeah. it would be Tom Rogers who unfortunately would have to drop out of the 23 based on what we've seen so far. Although I will say that Tom's numbers, according to Robbie Pass, were extremely good against Benetton, it, but it's one of those where the numbers and eye test didn't necessarily match up that much. Yeah, I mean, I know we, we've spoken about this for well over a year now, and when Tom Rogers a few years ago, he, he, he had the world at his feet, you know, I, I expected him to go on and be a, a proper mainstay in the international, even, you know, even potentially as a, a lion, probably not a test lion, but it been in that fight for a touring squad place, definitely. And he just has not kicked on. And yeah, he, I mean, I want to say he's a solid player, but I think that's all it is. I mean, I, I wish, I, I want him to prove me wrong. I want to see the player I thought he would be a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just... just I want to say the word unfortunate, because but the, he's still only twenty five. He's still got at least another six, seven, eight plus years in the game left. So you know anything can happen. Agree, agree. So are we on to score predictions then? Score prediction. I haven't actually thought of a score prediction. I, I just know it's a bonus point win. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the ball to you. One sec. Like like I can't get the camera. There it is. <laughs> hey, you got it. Yeah. Another right. one for YouTube. So, it, oh my God, I don't want to lose. I really, really don't want to lose. Um, I would say Scarlet's by 10. Then this might seem a bit, bit big in comparison. Um, I've got my scoreline 33-17. So 
starts by 16, if you're looking at it that way. Mm. See, see, the thing is, I always look think of the scores in tries and penalties, and then I look at it after and I'm thinking, hang on, <laughs> that looks a lot bigger than I anticipated to be in. You know, a, a two-score game, comfortable. It's going to be a comfortable win. It's got to be a comfortable win. If we... If, if we, you know, draw out in Benetton, win at home at Cardiff, if we get those results, are we winning the league? Ooh, let's get this first block over with, for, you know, first, get these six games out of the way. Um, You know, we're making the playoffs. It's just, you know, six, seven, or eight, which one are we picking? Because <laughs> if, if you want to see how one-eyed I, I really am, I've gone through this fixture list. And there's literally one, two, three, four games we're not winning. That's there's only four games we're not winning this season. And I'll still predict we're gonna win those games when we're on the pod. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. We'll we'll have we'll have ten minutes of a uh, bloody hell. We're we're not gonna do we're not gonna win this game and then we'll go score prediction, go scouts back to you. And then oh, yeah. that that's how it's gonna work. Yeah. Oh God, Matt! I hope we do. I hope we don't lose. I'm terrified oh, of losing this. <laughs> stop hoping. We're never losing this one. Oh, it's it's like the Ospreys beating the Dragons in at Rodney in the URC. Never gonna happen. <laughs> okay, I, I think on that point we've rounded everything up. Am I okay with that, Bert? Yeah, it's definitely, mate. Happy days. Well, thank you very much for listening. We will catch you all again next week. And a nice little reminder: if you do enjoy what we're doing, listening to it engage with us like subscribe anything we we love engagement we just want to hear from you guys thank you very much we catch you all again next week bye cheers